Hello and welcome to Thought for the Day on Wednesday. I'm coming to you from Christchurch, which is situated in the uh, area of the old city in Jerusalem. And uh, this church, which was built in the 1800s, has a long history of a ministry amongst the Jewish people. And in fact, if you look behind me, you'll see the writing behind the high altar is written in Hebrew, amongst which are some of the Ten Commandments. And on the altar, you'll see the menorah, the uh, candlestick, um, the same design and shape that you would have found in the temple. I'd like to read this morning from our Gospel reading from Holy Communion, and it's quite a short reading, so I'm going to read it to you now, but if you want to look at the verses, they are down below as usual. Please feel free to pause the video uh, before we carry on. So Matthew 13, 44 to 46. Jesus said to the crowds, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. He hides it again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. What's happening in this parable? First of all, this first man, he's in a field, he finds some treasure of, of great value, and he knows its value. That's the point to hold on to, he knows its value. Then he covers it up and he goes away. He finds the owner of the field and then buys it. Why has he done that? Well, very simply, any treasure in that field belongs to the landowner, whether they knew it was there or not. So for him to rightfully possess it, he has to go and approach the landowner and buy the field off him, obviously without telling him what he's found. Now in Jewish uh, society of uh, Jesus' day, if you owned land, it was very common that you may find things buried in it. And that's because there were no banks or building societies as we understand them today. And so if you were going away or you had something really precious you wanted to be sure no one stole, you would often go and bury it on your land somewhere. It's one of the reasons that a diligent landowner, when they bought a piece of land, would check that there, were nothing, there was nothing left from the previous owner because people so often hid their treasures in the ground. In fact, Jesus, uh, in the parable of the talents, there's the example of the servant who puts it in the ground. That's not because he's stupid or unimaginative. He's done what most people would do. He's put it in the ground where it would be safe. And so we have this man who recognises the value of the treasure and then goes and sells everything he has to buy the field. And accordingly, you have the uh, pearl of great price that the merchant who's uh, found it, goes and sells everything he has to get it. What is the message of this parable? What is going on? Is that both of these individuals have recognised that whatever it is they found, it is of such great value to them, they will give anything for it. They will give everything they have for it. They recognise its value. And Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like this. It's so valuable that it's like a man who sells everything he has for the pearl of great price or the treasure in the field. That is the value of being part of the kingdom of God. That you would give everything you own to be part of that kingdom, to be a member of that family. The kingdom of God on earth is the church. Christian brothers and sisters. We're called to be part of that kingdom. And yet how valuable is our membership to us? Are we like these two men in the parable Jesus mentioned who would be prepared to give everything we have to be part of it? Or would we be like Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, and, well, God, you can have most of it, but actually I'm going to keep something back for myself. How valuable is our membership of the kingdom of God to us? How valuable is that priceless gift of reconciliation with God, reconciliation and freedom from our sins that came at the cost of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross? How valuable is that to us? Would we give everything we had to be part of the kingdom. 
It's a question that many Christians over the years have been faced, faced with. And not every Christian, of course, is called to do that, to go and give everything they have. But there are Christians who are. And even if you're not called to give everything you have, there may come a time that God calls you to give something very precious to you in service of being part of that kingdom. And so I want to ask you again, how valuable is the kingdom of God to you? How valuable is being part of that kingdom of God for you? If God called you to give up everything you had in service of the kingdom, would you do it? It's a tough question. Let's pray in those circumstances if we find ourselves in them. So not only would we be willing to give up whatever God is asking, but that we would do it gladly and joyfully, remembering the Lord loves a cheerful giver. The value of being part of the kingdom of God. Let's never lose sight of it. Let's never lose hold of the fact that the kingdom of God and being part of it came at a cost. It came at the cost of Christ's life on the cross and in turn, it may also come at the cost that we are called to give up everything we have or to make a commitment that will radically change our lives, whatever it might be God is asking. Amen and God bless you.